Okay. All right, we are at 201. And so we will go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Alice Neckhart. I'm the Acting Director of Communications for the Office of Science. Uh, I want to welcome you to the Reaching a New Energy Workforce uh, or Renew for High Energy Physics FOA webinar. Um, before we begin, I have a couple of logistics things to go over. Uh, this meeting is being recorded, and that recording will be posted to um, our website next week. We will put that link in the chat so you can find that recording next week. Um, there are closed, captioning of closed captions available at the bottom of your screen. You'll see the CC button. Um, and after the presentation, there will be a question and answer session. Uh, we're going to be using the question and answer function in Zoom. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, there's a QA. and a uh, If you just drop your questions into that, we will get to them um, as we go. And with that, I want to introduce um, Brian Beckford from the High Energy Physics Program. Brian? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, welcome, everyone, to uh, reaching a new energy sciences workforce for high energy physics, uh, Renew HEP. I am Brian Beckford. I'm the program manager for the Intensity Frontier uh, within HEP and also overseeing the US Japan Research Program and this wonderful new funding opportunity. Um, and I'm happy to have you all here. And I'm, I'm thankful for this great turnout. Um, so the, the purpose of this webinar is to mainly uh, cover two things, right? Provide some background on HEP goals for Renew and provide an opportunity for stakeholders and everyone attending to ask some questions in order to improve uh, prospective proposals. As already notified, we will uh, not be using the, the raise hand feature to indicate you'd like to ask questions. So please refrain also from putting questions in our Q&A box until probably after the closing slides as, as we're making our way through the webinar, some of the questions might be answered. Um, during that time, please keep your questions brief and concise and avoid specific research topics or cheap arrangements as part of the questions. Um, here, I just simply wanna give a uh, overview of the organizational chart within uh, Times Physics. Recently, our new director, Regina, Dr. Regina Omaika, has taken on her position. Um, I'm going to focus on research and technology vision, which is uh, overseen by Glenn Crawford. And we have two branches, the research, physics research and research technology, and usually sitting here in the intensity frontier. But as you can see, it's a complex organizational structure for all of HEP. Uh, a quick reminder that uh, DOE is a mission-driven organization agency, which our mission is to understand the universe at its most fundamental level, which means to discover uh, the most elementary constituents of matter and energy, probe those interact for uh, basic nature of space and time. Our model within the agency is experimental science and technology R&D, which is mission driven and DOE develops and supports a specific portfolio of projects, which emphasis on planning and building experiments, operating and publishing results. And of course, uh, strong arm in theory, which of course activities that provide vision and mathematical framework for the understanding and extending our knowledge of the universe. With that, uh, I want to uh, emphasize that HCP underpins and advances the missions and objectives through a balanced portfolio of not only scientific research, but facilities, operations, projects, and development of key technologies and trained uh, person power in order to uh, reach the cutting edge of science. And this is one of our most recent office by the numbers. And again, this, so this slide will be part of the deck for your reference. As you can see, HEP not only has six core science programs, but we have three engineering technology offices. Our estimated researchers supported is over 10,000 permanent PhDs, over 3,000 postdocs, roughly 5,000 graduate students, and 9,000 other scientific personnel and steward in 10 uh, DOE national labs. Um, the efforts have uh, received over uh, they contributed to over 100 Nobel Prizes. And so, again, showing you the broad breadth of the mission of uh, uh, DOE's HEP. Uh, with that, um, to get to the importance of why everyone has joined the uh, webinar, is to speak of the FY23 funding announcement, also known as a FOA. This, issue, this uh, FOA was issued on January 9th, and today we're having our first webinar on it. 
Uh, for this, letters of intent are strongly encouraging a due um, in February 21st, our final proposal deadline, which will be March 31st. And we envision that a review and selection process will take place somewhere between April and June. And that our uh, announcements of new awards will be somewhere in July. Um, during the course of this webinar, we'll go over some of the registration and eligibility requirements, the type of proposal types we encourage, some guidance for collaborative proposals and uh, guidance for PIs with existing HEP grants. <clears throat> some background on the actual uh, SC Renew Initiative, which, which hopes to advance the goals of the Executive Order 13985. Um, and what that means is you know, within all of Office of Science, Renew has, is spanning various offices. We have our advanced computing research, Earth and environmental science, fusion energy science, basic energy science, isotope training, research and development, and of course, HEP. And within HEP, what we're trying to do is we acknowledge that our community has been uh, drawn primarily from a pool of uh, potential talent that is less diverse than the US population and has been concentrated at larger research intensive uh, academic centers. And we're trying to address this. So, broadly, the goal aims to build foundations within the Office of Science Research at institutions historically underrepresented in the research portfolio. Also, Renew aims to leverage uh, Office of Science unique national laboratories, unique facilities, and other research infrastructure to provide training opportunities for undergraduates, graduate students, postdoctoral researchers, and faculty at institutions not currently well represented in the US and technology ecosystem. And with this, provides some hand on experiment uh, opportunities through initiative that will open new career avenues for a, a future pool of talented scientists. And within the context of HEP, HEP is seeking to broaden and diversify the current HEP physics community. Some of the barriers identified in improving diversity and equity in HEP include lack of sufficient mentoring, support networks, or recruitment, uh, outreach and professional culture of inclusion at traditional HEP research institutions, lack of research infrastructure and support at these institutions that have not traditionally received HEP funding, uh, and possibly disadvantage in general the competitive review process, the need for additional support for faculty and institutions with large teaching loads, and a greater financial barrier to students pursuing uh, degrees in STEM fields. We have uh, designed or been influenced uh, strongly by the recommendations of reports, including the AIP's uh, team up report, and also been informed by the outcomes of some of the Office of Science for the listening sessions. In essence, uh, the HEP program uh, is designed to support training and research experiences uh, in support of particle physics for members of underserved communities. And our dual goal with an HEP is one, supporting investigators and building infrastructure, to research infrastructure at institutions which have not been traditionally part of our portfolio and increasing the likelihood that participants from underrepresented populations, such as those present at minority institutions, pursue STEM careers. Now, just to give some information about the actual FOA, within the, the scope of research or research activities that are supported, basically are all topics within HEP are eligible for a scope of work that can be posed in uh, your submitted proposal. And that means experimental science and technology R&D, as I said, is mission driven. DOE develops and supports specific portfolio projects within HEP that covers the intensity frontier, the energy frontier, cosmic frontier, detector, and general R&D, excuse me, general accelerated R&D, and of course, AIML. And as I mentioned earlier, theory. Uh, some of the application requirements, uh, eligible institutions, which is lead PIs from universities, colleges, nonprofits, and organizations, or profit organizations in DOE laboratories. And we do support multi-team collaborations. Um, as I mentioned earlier, letters of intent are not required, but we strongly encourage them which is a change from the previous uh, funding announcements. Now, just some added information. This is a reoccurring solicitation, so we will accept new proposals as well as renewal proposals from the previous cycle. This solicitation is planned to provide up to a total of 8 million over three years. And we expect to have a total of about uh, 18 to 14 projects uh, to be funded. There are no restrictions on the type of partnerships or the number of partners. Now, there are some restrictions I do want to mention. 
um, something that was carried over from the previous uh, FOA is uh, no more than 25% of the proposed budget must be allocated to a non-minority serving institution, partner, or participant. Also, applicant institutions are limited to no more than three letters of intent or applications for, from one lead PI. Now, a PI on a letter of intent or application may also be listed as a senior or key personnel on separate submissions. We expect that award size will be somewhere between 50 to 500K per year, and I just mentioned up to your awards are planned. Um, now, within uh, the proposal, or excuse me, within the full, uh, SC uses two different types of uh, mechanisms for multi team uh, participants, which are collaborative sub awards. Both collaborate, collaborative applications, proposed sub awards are methods by which multiple institutions can work together to reach the goals of the proposal. If multiple institutions will be functioning as a network of peer level researchers, a collaborative structure would probably be the appropriate. If multiple institutions will be functioning with leadership and direction coming from one institution, then a sub award agreement will be uh, more appropriate. And for details, I encourage you to read the follow up in detail. Now, uh, what we do support, and this is no change from the uh, previous announcement, we do support traineeships uh, for, again, undergraduates to graduate students, and the award term is expected to be about 36 months. Now, traineeships should typically be for at least one to two years in durations, and should typically provide 15 hours of support per week, average over the academic year or 40 hours in the summer. Traineeships may extend after graduation to one year gap year for participants who intend to apply or consider applying to graduate school. Also, travel and, and salary support for traineeships in order, in order to recognize and familiarize the role of those involved in mentoring, propose inclusion of partial support for academic year or summer salary, which up to four months for faculty and partial support for postdocs is also encouraged. Also, support for faculty members at student traineeship home institutions, even if the primary research activity is being conducted elsewhere. Uh, such as at a national laboratory, is also encouraged. So traineeship-focused proposals, applications with clear, detailed mentoring plans will be favored. Simultaneously, support for multiple trainees or cohort, while not required, is viewed as beneficial. Um, applicants, applications should clearly articulate benefits to participant and trainees, including skills being acquired, networking opportunities, and practical assistance in career planning. Uh, in essence, a, a full detailed uh, professional development plan is encouraged. Um, again, some budget items that can be supported within this flow, and this is no change from the previous year, is salary, buying out faculty time, dedicated to teaching administrative responsibilities, stipend and benefits for students and postdoc researchers, uh, recognizing the dual nature as training and employees. Support for administrative personnel, dedicated to proposed, proposed activity, support for professional development, training, mentoring of student and junior researchers, and of course, frigid benefits. Travel is also still supported and a uh, potential budget item. Travel to meet with potential collaborators at other institutions, attend scientific conferences, collaboration meetings, workshops, regional uh, professional society meetings. Membership, so costs in professional societies, equipment, instrumentation, and other indirect costs. But of course, again, I want to highlight that no more than 25% of the budget is to be at a non-MSI participant. Uh, very quick details about the project narrative. And the project narrative is composed as a plan for the project. So I'm, I'm not going to cover all the details listed here, um, as you can see the full for, for further uh, information. But please include a description of any relevant past experience in workforce development, mentoring of students, students, and or involvement in of undergraduate and particle physics research and identify specific capabilities and characteristics that support the goals of this initiative. As I also highlighted, the narrative should demonstrate an awareness of the challenges to reaching the goals proposed and how these challenges will be mitigated. The narrative will not, me, must not exceed 15 pages. Um, and of course, the font must be not smaller than uh, 11 words. So I do want to highlight some changes to this POA. So the FY22 FOA strongly focused on research traineeships. Um, one specific change is that FY23 FOA includes the promoting inclusive and equitable research plan requirement, which is now a requirement for all SC proposals. We'll 
uh, focus that a little later in the webinar. <clears throat> One thing we have taken the time to change the forward is this current uh, announcement includes language to describe the, that infrastructure focus proposal are strongly encouraged and sought. And in this case, we ask proponents to describe or to provide a detailed description of a plan to build and develop research infrastructure at institutions. Describe planned strategies to involve institutions into the HEP research portfolio. And if partnering, very important, describe how an institution not currently in HEP will be impacted in a uh, sustainable way from partnering with an institution that currently is. And we have to describe how the proposed work would help achieve uh, developed research infrastructure and support institutions not currently in HEP. And I'll skip down and say, uh, demonstrate an awareness of the challenges, again, of reaching this uh, goal of building infrastructure and how these will uh, be mitigated. And, and so one thing I want to highlight is that I would encourage everyone to be creative, be extremely creative with the unique opportunities presented with this type of FOA, um, unlike uh, some of the restrictions in a more research-driven FOA, um, where there is opportunity for faculty buyout or to build infrastructure, I encourage uh, PIs to be very creative in thinking of how they can leverage this unique opportunity. Um, so here are some of the merit review criteria. Again, this is fully detailed within the phone. I encourage you to, to review um, substantially, but some of the things that we will be looking for and reviewers will be looking for is what is the likelihood of actually achieving uh, the proposed goals? If evaluating an application for a program support center, does the sports center have an appropriate plan for tracking the success of the national program? Um, here I'm taking something specifically from the peer component. Does the proposed plan to recruit, retain students, and early stage investigators provide sufficient mentorship? Does this plan, where appropriate, include an aspect of faculty faculty engagement between house, host institution faculty and faculty on the side? How likely is it the proposed activities? including any outreach activities to help broaden and diversify the community of researchers. Also, uh, you know, the reviewers will be looking at past performance and potential of, of EPIs. And based off this past performance, a current plan has the applicant is demonstrating an aptitude for fostering a sense of belonging and nurturing physics identity within the trainee populations. How does the role of responsibility of all collaborators on the project, including those at, at minority serving institutions or non R1 institutions, reflect a level of meaningful and substantial effort? How is that substantial effort reflected in proposed budgets? And of course, uh, is the budget reasonable and appropriate? Um, and, and here, coming uh, specifically again from the peer component, um, what aspects of the peer plan are likely to contribute to the goal of creating and maintaining an equitable, inclusive, encouraging and professional training and research environment and supporting a sense of belonging uh, among project personnel. Other important items to, to point out is again, I'm encouraging everyone to spend time reading the proposal carefully and following the requirements in terms of length and context as there's several requirements that are set from within the uh, Office of Science and there's little flexibility uh, to modify. Unfortunately, non-compliant proposals submitted would not be reviewed. All proposals must have a data management plan. And uh, every FOA has different eligibility and technical requirements of page limits. Again, I wanted to highlight that there's now the promoting inclusive equitable research peer plan requirement for all Office of Science FOAs. And in 2023, all DOE Office of Science funding opportunity and national lab announcements and other solicitation will require applicants to submit this plan as an appendix to their uh, proposal narrative. Some of the guiding questions uh, I mentioned earlier, but just to give you some more information, for this criteria is, is the proposed peer plan suitable for the size and complexity of the proposed project and an integral component of the proposed uh, project? To what extent is the peer plan likely to lead to participants, participation of individuals from diverse backgrounds, including individuals historically underrepresented in the research community? And how does the proposed plan include an intentional mentorship and, all, and, are, and are the associated mentoring resources reasonable and appropriate? There, here's a link for full details on the career plan, um, FAQ um, for proposed, for proponents, excuse me. In closing, 
Uh, I do want to spend the time just to reiterate that for HEP, our main programmatic goals um, for this funding announcement is supporting investigators and building research infrastructure at institutions not traditionally part of HEP, and of course, increasing the likelihood that participants from underrepresented populations, such as those present at minority service institutions, uh, pursue STEM careers by providing traineeships and undergraduate traineeships for undergraduates, graduate students, postdocs, and faculty at academic institutions not well represented in our portfolio. And I think this is a wonderful and exciting time in HEP, and I'll be happy to take questions. All right. Thank you, Brian. Um, so if you have a question for Brian, you can go ahead and drop it into the Q&A box, um, and we will be happy to answer them. I'll give everybody just a moment to queue up those questions. I can see for just a second. All right, there's one. Okay. All right, institutionally, my physics department has experienced success in DOE HEP. However, College of Engineering has not been successful. What would qualify as not receiving prior support? However, the College of Engineering has not been successful. Would that qualify as not receiving prior support? Um, I would say that based off the information provided, this would, it would not qualify and that we are again trying to encourage participation from students within the physics department and uh, uh, grow the HP portfolio in terms of physics departments and physics faculty that are receiving support from uh, SC. So your department has already received HP support. That does not make you ineligible at all. And of course, you have the opportunity to partner with other institutions and use your expertise and knowledge as being part of HEP to grow or reach out or broaden the participation by partnering and, and uh, bringing a new institution and providing traineeship opportunities for your students and also students at uh, partnering institutions. All right, thank you. Um, this is a, a common question that I think Mike Zarkin can maybe answer for us. Is an MSI um, and R1 eligible? Can you explain our eligibility to us? Okay, for the purposes of the re re yeah. reaching a new energy sciences workforce FOA for the high energy physics program, there are no eligibility requirements. Unlike some other recent Office of Science funding opportunities for which you must be a non-R1 minority serving institution to be eligible, this FOA has no such requirements. If you are an applicant organization who is not a registered lobbyist, you're eligible to apply. Registered lobbyists are generally prohibited from our programs. Thank you. All right. Um, I submitted a proposal to HEP um, to the HEP FOA that was due in December of 2022. Can I submit the same proposal to the Renew HEP FOA as well? Um, I'm going to try to answer this and make sure I understand. When you said submitted a proposal to HEP FOA in December. I think you're referring to our research opportunities in HEP, also known as the comparative review. Probably. And, and if so, I think I would encourage you to, to read the details of this FOA as the uh, comparative review FOA is a research driven and, and focused FOA and uh, Renew HEP is not a research FOA. This is mainly again, 
towards providing opportunity, traineeship opportunities for students, graduate students, and also for building infrastructure at institutions not currently participating in HEP. So I, I would encourage you to, to uh, probably tweak that proposal. There are gonna be components that I think are gonna be useful, um, but, but I would not encourage you to simply submit the same proposal that, that you use for the comparative review to this funding opportunity and uh, to submit a proposal that is specifically trying to address the things detailed in this announcement. Great. All right. Thank you. Um, may we submit a renewal if we were awarded funding through the last renew proposal? Um, if your present award from the previous uh, FOA was for a one year award, yes, you may submit a, a renewal and I'll have uh, Mike Zarkin will follow up on that. If you have a, an award that was a multi-year award, I don't think you can then submit at this funding opportunity for a renewal. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, go ahead and drop them into the chat or the Q&A box. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to drop a link into the chat to encourage everyone to sign up um, to receive more information about Office of Science. Um, it's um, an email subscriber um, service, so you can pick and choose what you want to um, hear about from us. And that is my little advertisement for our, our email service. Um, not seeing any other questions. We'll give everybody just another minute before we log off. And another question. All right. In terms of page limits, should narrative focus more on the traineeship structure, i.e. recruiting, mentorship, et cetera, um, and skim the science lightly? So uh, this is a very good question. I think um, the science that you're planning to uh, involve the trainees uh, students with is important, but uh, I would encourage you to blend that in um, with detailing how the students will benefit from it, how it's relevant to their professional development, how the mentoring will allow them to uh, develop an interest in the research so that they want to pursue again STEM and not focus on the narrative, trying to convince the reviewers that the science is important. Great, thank you. Okay. Still taking questions, you have them. Um, in the meantime, I will say that you can always um, use the contact information within the FOA if you have um, more questions, other questions that uh, maybe we're not answered here in the presentation or follow up questions. Um, uh, Brian, is your information in the FOA? Is that the contact? Yes. Okay. Um, I have that ready. So, the program staff responsible for selections and award management and overseeing the renew uh, HP is uh, myself. And here's my contact for email. Um, there's also overseen by uh, uh, Glenn Crawford, which is Director for Research Technology. And if you are having trouble with your submission at all, I have also included Pam's contact uh, and it helped us. But for any questions around FOA uh, eligibility, um, please feel free to contact me. Um, probably the best way is through email. All right, great. And um, the slides will be available. Um and the recording also, and those both will be posted to the website I just dropped into the chat, which is our, our funding opportunities website. Uh, you just scroll down and find the high energy physics one at the bottom. Um, we did have one more question, uh, which I think we covered, but we'll just reiterate. Uh, if we submitted a renewed proposal previously for multiple years, but we're only funded for one year, can we submit a renewal? Yes. 
and renewal would be appropriate for that uh, type of award. Great. Okay. All right. Other questions? We'll give you another moment. All right. Well, I see no other questions. So thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Brian, for your lovely presentation. That was really informative. Um, and yeah, any any rap, uh, final thoughts, Brian? Um, final thoughts again. I thank you all for, for joining the webinar. Thank you for everyone involved in making this uh, go off smoothly. Um, I, my, my, again, my encouragement to all PIs that are considering this opportunity is to really push yourself to be creative um, and to use the opportunity that this FOA is presenting, unlike previous funding opportunities within HEP, to, to try to, uh, as I said, diversify, uh, provide training for new students, partner with institutions uh, nearby, um, and basically, as I said, use this opportunity that is unique um, to expand the type of things you'd like to put in proposal that previously you could not. And feel free to reach out with questions, but I encourage you to be creative. Here's the opportunity, please use it. All right. Thank you everyone and have a great afternoon. Thank you all.